Hey everybody, it's John Stoffer. I'm here to bring you a tech tip from MCAM Northwest. If there's one thing I know, it's that deburring is not very fun. It's something that pretty much every machining operation needs to deal with, and it means a lot of time for operators or deburring people to sit there and deburr parts. But this doesn't have to be this way. In a lot of ways, we can work in our programming to reduce the number of burrs that we have in the first place. There's lots of tips and tricks for that. We've gone over that in previous videos. But in this video, I want to show you what I'm really excited about in Mastercam 2025, and that's the new 3D Deburr add-on. This is an add-on that you can get for any license of MIL, MIL 3D, Router, or Router 3D, and it's going to make deburring just way easier for everybody. Let's take a look. So this is a part that has a lot of different features so that I can really show you how the Deburr toolpath works. Essentially, all we need to do is go to our toolpaths here, and grab the 3D add-on, which is down here. I'm going to select my tool. This is a quarter inch lollipop tool for this example. You can take a look at kind of what that looks like. We've got a neck down profile here, so we can really get into those undercuts. This is important because it lets us access a lot more features on our part to cut. But this toolpath does support ball and mills as well. So if that's the only tool you have, that does work. Once we've selected that tool, we go to our cut pattern. I'm going to keep things pretty simple for today's video. But first we're going to select our machining geometries, which would basically be the entire part. So I'll just triple click. Then I'm going to set my edge shape. In this case, I'm going to say that I'm breaking all the edges by about five thousandths. Let's leave it there for now and just see what we get. So the default output for this is pretty good. We're getting a lot of things that would be difficult with other toolpaths. For example, we could use something like Model Chamfer to get a lot of this, but with Model Chamfer, we're going to be limited on how we set up that tool, and we may not be able to get all of these edges in a single toolpath. We might have to break it up depending on where we want the contact point for the chamfer tool. We can also use Contour and use the chamfer option, but again, we're limited on how we can apply that. This toolpath really takes care of a lot of that for us. We even get the ability to do some undercutting. As we look in here, we can see some undercuts happening right in this area, but it's not really getting everything. So there's a couple quick changes we need to make. First, we need to look at some clearances. And then second, we also have some edges that we can exclude. And then finally, this retract motion is pretty messy. Let's go ahead and take care of that. These are all pretty easy changes. In the parameters, we're going to use exclude edges to ignore certain edges. In this case, I just want to ignore these two. I don't really need to deburr them. Then we're going to go into the tool axis control page and adjust the clearances. The ones that are in here are pretty generous and don't work great for undercutting. So make sure that your tools are very well defined and that when you build them on the shop floor, they really match what you have in Mastercam. Once you're confident with that, you can set these values pretty small. Then I'm going to go to the linking page, set my links to clearance blend spline instead, and I'll just let this be automatic. I'm going to shorten some of these distances as well that should get us a pretty tight toolpath. The last thing to do here is go into the feed rate control. Here I can modify the feed rates for anything that isn't cutting motion. I'm just gonna set this for 500 inches a minute for this example. We green check, and now our new result will get us a toolpath that's gonna to do a very good job of deburring this entire part, and it keeps everything nice and tight. Let's take a look and verify. I've set this up so that the part model itself is kind of the stock, so we can see what just the deburring looks like. I've got this set right in the middle for speed, and I'm using time mode so we can see what this actually looks like. So we see it kind of roll around, and then every time it gets up into the air, it's really speeding up that feed rate so that we're not wasting time. And then we're taking a nice clean 5 thou cut on every edge. This took really minimal programming to get to this point, and it's gonna give us a very nicely deburred part. Let's go ahead and just run this up to the end. And we can take a look here. Look at all the excellent deburring it did, even on things like side holes. This does a great job of getting this part pretty much burr free. It's still not perfect. If we whip around to the back side, there's a couple holes here that we didn't do that we might be able to reach with the correct tool, but not with this one. So there's always going to be physical limitations, but in terms of programming and getting most of the deburring done, this does a great job. Machine deburring helps a lot because it means that we're not 
deburring it by hand. And when we're not deburring by hand, there's less chance for injuries. We're going to get more consistent results as well and more beautiful results. Not to mention, depending on how delicate your parts are, it's possible to actually scrap parts in the deburring process. And by doing it on the machine, we're going to greatly reduce that risk. So I hope that this was helpful for you. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. But more importantly, we're here for you. We want to serve you the best way that we can. So if you need anything, please reach out to us. Our number is 503-653-5332. Or you can email us at sales at mcamnw.com. Thanks. Have a good day.